What's up guys? So if you're in the maths or sciences, you probably see linear algebra everywhere. Because it's used everywhere, I thought it would be good to go into the linear algebra library. So when you install Julia, the, it actually comes with a couple specific libraries along with it. Linear algebra is one of them, and there's a couple others that it comes with the, the base installation. I wanted to go through that library, go through some of the operations it could do, cover an example such as solving a system of equations and finding stuff out. If that all sounds cool to you, please give this video a like and subscribe. First, I wanted to get into the vector stuff. And I actually first want to touch on this syntax. Now, I haven't fully gotten into this. I believe we have two column vectors, then we have a row vector, and then we have this two by three going on here. Now, if you see here, we have one, two, three separated by commas. And then for the next one, we have one, two, three separated by semicolon. Now, when you're using commas, it will just generate the column vector on its own. That's because Julia is column major. So it just does that automatically. This semicolon syntax is saying, this is the end of my row. When you use a semicolon you're saying this is row one semicolon row two semicolon row three now this space syntax that you see here for one two and three this is saying this is a row vector so that's why this is a one by three while this was a three by one and then the space syntax can be used along with the semicolon syntax i'm separating one two three semicolon four five six those are the, the syntaxes another thing to be aware of is you can't use the semicolon with commas commas are their own own thing and the space semicolon syntax is its own thing. First thing to cover on vectors is forming a norm. So I can do print ln norm of x and print that out and 3.74. Okay, so we have that. Now if we can do a norm, then we can make it a unit vector. So we just take x, we divide it by the norm, and we get this new vector. But the linear algebra library also has a normalize function, which is essentially the same exact thing. So you're going to see the same exact output. And there it is. Normalize is pretty nice because it reduces all the computation, but it is essentially just this operation above it. Okay, next we have the dot product. So for here, we will call dot of x, y. And it'll do that. Okay, so it produces 14. And it actually has another syntax where if you want to do x slash c dot have y. Now this is using the Unicode character, and they define this specific Unicode character as the dot product. Call that as well. You also get 14. Now for the cross products, it's a similar idea. We have x comma y, and then they also define one of the characters. So this would be x times y. In that case, we're just getting zeros because our x and y is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And when you take the cross product of two vectors that are right over each other, they're parallel, then you get zero. Okay, so that was vector operations. Now looking into matrix operations, we first start off with the matrix multiplication. Now for that, just straight multiply these. Lay a times c. I'm only doing display instead of print because display displays it better. Now you can see here all I do is multiply and as long as the matrices are the correct shape it will multiply them out. This is two square matrices multiplying together. It did that operation fine and then this is a square times a rectangular but their rows and columns match and that they did that operation fine. Now for element wise I've also kind of gone into this but you do the dot syntax a times b and you can see here so b in this case is just a matrix of ones and what the element y syntax is doing is you're multiplying a11 of your a matrix to b11 of the b matrix and a12 times b12 a13 times b13 so on and so forth now that will generate a whole new matrix which is what's outputted here in this case because b is just all ones just one multiplied to each value of a, so you just get a back. Okay, next we have operations, and there's quite a lot of these, so I'm just gonna start rattling these off. So we have trace of a, and then we have determinant of a. Okay, so trace is the main diagonal, and determinant is doing that determinant operation from linear algebra. Another one is doing a transpose. See here, it just transposed the matrix, also do transpose explanation mark and you can just change a itself 
but I want to keep it the same right now. Other important information is this eigenvalues. So eigenvals of A and display eigenvex of A. Okay, so this is producing the eigenvals and eigenvex of the A matrix. So we have the vectors corresponding to our values corresponding to the A columns. Another important operation is the inverse. So we call n of A and we call that and there's our inverse. Okay, after touching on all the operations, I also want to touch on special matrices. So if I just display this D matrix here, see it's just a three by three array. Now what the linear algebra pack has is I can define an actual diagonal matrix and insert the matrix into there. You can see it generated this new diagonal object. So this is important for future operations. If you're working with a special matrix such as a Hermitian, diagonal, symmetric, any of those that have special properties, if you define it as such within the linear algebra pack, then it will recognize that and perform optimized operations on those specific matrices. So if you know ahead of time what kind of matrix it is, it's good to define it in that specific format. And the documentation actually states what all operations are faster for these specific special matrices. Okay, so now for solving a linear system, we have this A matrix here and this B vector, and we're solving out for X. To do that, we would have X is equal to A divided by B. I do a print ln of X naught just to show what it is. Okay, so we get these values. Now to add just an extra layer to this, Let's say your A matrix is super complex. It's really big, it has lots of values, maybe it has lots of zeros inside of it. They're really big, they're really small, whatever. A is, A can be considered kind of unstable. A good thing to perform before you just divide it is uh, factorization. You do A factorize, and then I'm gonna do a display just so we can see what's going on with A. And then we would do the division. Okay, so you can see A is a little bit different. And actually this time, after it got factorized, it's now categorized as LU, another special matrix in this case. In this case, this matrix actually has two matrices. It has the lower half and it has the upper half. And if you wanted to confirm to yourself that this is true, then you can do A dot L times A dot U. So if you multiply the lower half times the upper half, you should get the A matrix back. And you can see that's what we got. We got one, two, one, negative one, one, two, one, negative. Okay, so now a final thing, just so we have this X naught and just to kind of show graphically what it is. We have these two equations and this B and we, we can plot all this out actually. Now here is my new block of code. And so this X lin is just for me plotting stuff out. This f and g function are the first and second rows of the a and b matrices. Um, so if you do a little bit of the math, you can see that this uh, the first row correlates with f and the second row correlates with g. This is me just printing out my x naught again, and then I'm plotting out the two functions, and then I'm plotting that one point of x naught. All right, and there it is. So we have our f, we have our g, here's our dot, and if you remember, this x naught is just for me solving out the matrices. I didn't do something with f of x or g of x. These are two separate operations, but what do you know, math works. And I thought that was a cool way to see graphically what's going on with some of these matrices. Once you go higher in dimensions, visually this doesn't really hold anymore. The third dimension, this, these, you have planes crossing and it's a line intersection. Once you get higher, then you, you can't visualize it anymore. <laughs> Okay, and that's what I have for you this week. If you like what I've been doing, please give this video a like and subscribe. The Twitter and IG links are in the description. I'll be posting weekly announcements about the channel. If you have any requests for what libraries to cover in the future, feel free to tweet at me on Twitter at DJ's Office Hours or email me at DJ's Office Hours at gmail.com. Hope you learned something new and I'll see you guys next week.